Hello, welcome. I'm Dr. Lewis Hassel, uh, coming to you from the University of Oklahoma Health Sciences Center. And I welcome you to another session of Digital Slide Review and Sign Out. Our case today uh, actually dates back uh, well into my training years many years ago when I performed an autopsy on a gentleman who was found to have uh, an, a previously undetected posterior mediastinal mass. And uh, in as much as this was the first time I had seen something like this, it uh, has stuck with me throughout the rest of my career. Um, he uh, died of other disease. Uh, this was uh, seemingly unrelated, um, uh, but I was very interested to examine uh, this lesion and to learn more about it. Uh, first of all, one of the things I think is helpful is to ask ourselves kind of what, what happens in the posterior mediastinum. Uh, you know, there are a number of vital structures that live here, uh, vessels, nerves, spinal cord, spine, bone, so forth and so on, as well as the various pleura and other sorts of things. But we don't have the thymus. We don't have too many epithelial structures. Uh, we don't usually have, um, you know, much in the way of uh, those kinds of uh, things that are uh, more in the anterior or uh, middle uh, mediastinum related to the heart and uh, most of the great vessels. But we should think about pleura-derived lesions, uh, solitary fibrous tumors, for example, or uh, mesotheliomas, rarely. Uh, also, because we've mentioned nerves, and so CNS-related lesions, nerve lesions like schwannomas or neuroblastoma, ganglioneuroma, sorts of things, and even meningiomas that uh, can uh, protrude away from the uh, um, uh, central uh, spinal canal uh, can occur here. Then, of course, you have the uh, bone lesions in the ribs and in the spine, uh, as well as occasional vascular and other soft tissue lesions, such as liposarcoma or synovial sarcomas and those sorts of things. So in as much as this wasn't a uh, significant uh, uh, association with his uh, morbidity, uh, we just took a few representative sections, and I'll like to go through what one of those looks like with you here now. So here you see sort of uh, soft tissue, a little bit of peripheral hemorrhage, uh, some surrounding um, fatty and other tissues. Um, and you see that there's not a really distinct margin, although it's fairly, uh, fairly sharp. Um, and as we look a little closer, we see there is some admixed fat. Uh, and vessels here, as well as this sort of pale, low cellularity tissue here uh, that we can see has uh, quite a degree of um, fibrous uh, tissue, some small spindly nuclei and so forth. So as we look around a little bit further in this lesion, we'll go a little bit more into the uh, other areas of the lesion. Um, we see that there are uh, a number of uh, larger cells, such as you see here, uh, that look uh, quite striking. Um, and uh, of course, you immediately recognize these as uh, ganglion type cells with their uh, sort of amphiphilic granular cytoplasm, uh, eccentric uh, macronuclei with uh, large nuclei and some nucleoli in some of them. Uh, so, a lesion that has ganglion cells, it also has these. Uh, sort of spindly or swirled at pattern cells that look a little bit like uh, Schwann cells or at least neurilemmal type cells. Um, and uh, that was essentially the uh, appearance throughout. So this is uh, the uh, lesion that is uh, affectionately known as a ganglioneuroma. Um, and as we uh, study this lesion, it's not particularly common in older adults, much more frequently presents in uh, younger people. Uh, but the presentation in this manner is not atypical. In other words, very often it is an incidental finding uh, and removed uh, because there's a uh, concern that it may be related to some other disease process uh, or may be uh, occasionally associated with symptoms such as pain and so forth. Uh, this tends to occur along the sympathetic chain. Uh, and so you can get uh, lesions in the abdomen, even in the adrenal. Uh, as well, because this is a, a, a gang, a, a, a neural crest derived lesion. Uh, and this histology is uh, very typical. Now, in younger individuals, these lesions maybe uh, have more uh, neuroblastomatous elements, 
Uh, it's felt that there's a spectrum of neuroblastoma, ganglioneuroblastoma or ganglioneuroma uh, that can occur in this location. Um, and mediastinum and retroperitoneum, of course, are the most frequently encountered sites. Um, rarely, this is associated with a multiple endocrine neoplasia or some other syndrome like Turner syndrome. Um, and uh, the behavior is almost uniformly benign, unless that Schwann cell component develops into a malignant peripheral nerve sheath tumor. Now, these uh, tumors are not usually functional, although occasional uh, increases in uh, vandal mandelic acid have been reported uh, in association with the lesion. In terms of microscopic appearance, this mixture of ganglion cells and admixed Schwann cells which may uh, sort of uh, cluster or in sheath uh, little neuritic processes are possible. Uh, and we've mentioned the immature neuroblastic cells uh, that can occur. Peripherally, we can see fat as we did on our case, occasional mast cells, other inflammatory cells. And there have been rare reported masculinizing variants that uh, may have uh, lytic cells or adrenocortical type cells uh, as well. Uh, as would be expected with a, a neural derived tumor, these uh, cells are or these tumors are positive with S100 in both components, uh, synaptophysis and GFAP and uh, neural uh, fibrillary protein. Uh, they tend to be negative for any epithelial markers for HMV45, CD99, uh, Desmond, and CD45 in case you are concerned about lymphoma or uh, some other uh, neoplasm. So uh, just to sort of uh, reiterate the uh, lesson, here's an example uh, plucked from our files. Uh, showing uh, here an adrenocortical lesion uh, with uh, adrenal cortex out here, and then this uh, uh, more cellular pink tumor here uh, centrally, with here a lot of uh, sort of neuritic processes and only occasional uh, ganglion type cells here. I notice this is more fascicular, but these cells are still have that wavy uh, Schwann cell type of an appearance uh, as well. Uh, and of course, I'll leave a link to these digital slides so that you can come back and explore them uh, more at your leisure later on uh, to help reinforce your learning. So that's our case for today. I appreciate you joining me. Uh, final diagnosis and sign out was ganglioneuroma. Um, of course, uh, no adverse uh, uh, implications, although the patient in this case was already uh, uh, deceased. We hope that if you enjoyed that, you'll uh, hit the subscribe and uh, like button. That always helps us get our videos uh, to you more quickly and also helps others to find uh, the work that we're doing. Uh, if you have comments or questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. I'm always uh, appreciative of the chance to communicate with uh, you uh, either about individual cases or about uh, content or other things that you'd like to see us do with our uh, channel. So uh, until next time, uh, thanks so much for joining me.